All right, Tommy Ball Games. I gotta ask you this straight up. You walk into a room with a beautiful woman, everyone's staring, you take your coat off, someone just walks over and grabs that coat for you. Right? That's true, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's actually, I love that shot. I mean, I, the way Guillermo framed that scene mm -hmm. is like, is amazing. And, and um, that's when you know you're watching a romance, I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because the camera work on that particular scene, it almost starts off high so you can yeah. see over the party and then you get involved. It's a very unique experience, I think. And Mia looks so beautiful in that shot. I think she just is, she kind of radiates um, beauty. It's a, great, it's a great piece of cinema. And the candle didn't go out. The Congrats candle did not go out. You see, that's the thing. Is it in, in the film, my character says the true test of the perfect waltz is for a candle, a candle flame not to be extinguished in the hand of a lead dancer. Um, and because Mia is such a great dancer and we didn't go up and down, we managed to keep the candle going. Wow, so it actually did it not go out. It actually didn't go out. You that's, can ask Mia and you can ask Guillermo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I gotta ask you this too, wearing all those clothes in that time mm. period, you know, today's day and age I can just stroll out in a sh you know, shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah. Back then it's a whole rigmarole. You it's gotta, a whole thing. You, it's like so hot, it's gotta yeah, be so yeah, hot yeah. in those clothes. Yeah. Like how do you do that? Hot if you're, uh, hot if the weather's hot. But yeah. it was actually pretty cold when we shot the film, so oh, I, was, okay. I was grateful for the extra layers. Um, yeah, I mean, I think some those the clothes they make you they make you stand in a different way. They make you behave in a different way. Um, they kind of give you a different bearing and different uh, manners, you know. Give you um, good posture too. Good posture. Could use some of that. Very good for dancing. Mm -hmm. um, but also they make you feel sort of more solid in a way. It was a different world, you know. Back in the day, people were so much more. Uh, bound to the landscape, and the landscape of Crimson Peak is very harsh. So yes. you need, you need uh, sturdy clothing to see you through. Do you think we all just sort of settle at some point with the cards that we've been dealt, and then you don't jump to action until you see something better come along? Because I feel like that's the case with your character here. Mm -hmm. You're sort of doing this dark. Right. You know, you're not playing by the rules. You're really dirty about what your <laughs> your your business isn't. It's not clean yeah. business, right? Yeah. But then you see something you actually care about. It's like that light that finally gets to shine through and now you step it up, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think Crimson Peak is ultimately a story about love. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Thomas Sharp in, in Edith, in Mia's character, falls in love for the, perhaps the first time, which is surprising and chaotic. I don't think there's any, there's any kind of malice um, or malevolence there. It's not like he's waiting for a better option. You know, ultimately, it puts him in a very tricky situation. Um, in order to try and make the right choice, without spoiling anything, he uh, he puts himself in danger. So, I'd like to I like to think that sometimes, you know, sometimes life happens to us, and it, and we are not in control of. The only thing we can control is our response to it, and that's interesting to me.